Well, welcome, welcome to another show. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate you tuning in. I'm Todd T. Riley. I'm Scott Johnston. And I'm Dee Johnson. And we are The, the Sound, Sound Effect. Effect. We usually mostly talk about music here on The Sound Effect, as you know. Uh, you know, but we're also all about entertainment, and sports is entertainment. And so tonight we're breaking a little bit from the norm, and uh, we are bringing you our super show. On this Super Show, we have, uh, you know, the big game coming up, Super Bowl 53. That's on the third between the L.A. Rams and the New England Patriots. Yes, Tom Brady is going back to the big game for the ninth time. Can you believe that? It's unreal. So we have here in the studio with us tonight a couple of very special guests. And uh, I often like to joke around the Bake More Pie studio here that uh, I only hang out with Super Bowl champions. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's a joke, of course, because I hang out with these two yahoos. But um, allow oh, me to man. introduce to you a couple of my friends, and uh, one of them is my very best, one of my very best friends here, Mr. Earl Christie, the Twirl, as he's known, Earl the Twirl. He played in Super Bowl three with the New York Jets, and Joe Namath played with Mr. Earl, and also our former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Mr. Michael Clayton, representing my man there. He was the Super Bowl forty six champion, at New York Giants, the only team to beat Tom Brady in the big game, not once, but twice. Earl and Michael, welcome to the show. Appreciate you guys being here tonight. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's an honor to have you both here. Thanks honor, for being honor, our guests. Yeah. So. And, and, and I would say both of your distinguished uh, partners are super. <laughs> And both of you have like bowl heads, so it's kind of like Super Bowl still. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Super Bowl, friend, you know. Oh, that's you got funny. This, you know. Are you talking? You know, I just got a haircut, and I, I told him I said, like, "The bowl cut." Don't use the bowl that's exactly you know. Use the warped one because that's what I'm used to. There you go. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. Miss D has that beautiful hat. Oh yeah, yeah. thank you, you know, thank you for loaning it to me. Rocking super, <laughs> thank rocking, you. rocking it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the Jersey memo though, Earl. So thank you, thank you, Todd. I texted you about that. Yeah, you know, I was already here. You didn't. Read, you read it <laughs> I, I too was late, already though. in route. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's rep oh, I represent fully. you, man. I'm wearing your jersey, the, uh, my friend. <laughs> he's got. A, you can find those in the local uh, thrift stores, <laughs> flea markets. <laughs> nice. Old Clayton jersey. <laughs> thank you, though, brother. That's Absolutely. Nice. Half price day. No. <laughs> So coming up a little later in the show, we're going to have a special performance. Uh, you're not going to want to miss this. This is uh, recorded right here at Bakemore Pies Studio. Uh, organist f for the Blues Brothers. You know, believe it or not, the Blues Brothers, it's a real band, the, the real deal. Um, Sean Brown. So uh, don't, uh, you know, don't forget to, you got to tune in for that. we got a show poll. We're going to talk about that. too, actually. Michael brought him in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great friend of mine. Great guy. Very cool. One of the best entertainers in Tampa Bay and has been for a very long time. Mentored a lot of a lot of great talent. Eric Darius is one of the great oh, jazz wow. play, uh, saxophone players. Mentored him as a child. So Sean Brown goes way back. Heck he's, yeah. He's a, he's a great friend to know. He's a serious talent yeah. for sure. So Very cool. Don't forget to vote on our show poll as well. Uh, this week's poll we will be discussing uh, a little bit later on. Go to our website, the uh, Sound Effects Show, <laughs> on Facebook. Put in your vote here. and uh, make sure you get it in there uh, before the show is over. You know, third section of the show, we will discuss that. Uh, this week's, you know, who had the better uh, commercials? During the Bud, big game, Budweiser, Budweiser, Budweiser or, Doritos. Or, or Doritos, yeah. yeah. We will definitely be discussing that a little bit later, so make sure you stick around for that. But first, we're going to get into some music and entertainment news. So January 20th, 1869, Elizabeth Cady Stanton becomes the very first woman to testify before U.S. Congress. That's a milestone for women there, which is a mm -hmm. cool thing. In 1986, the first federal holiday honoring Martin Luther King Jr. happened. And in 1930, first radio broadcast of The Lone Ranger on WXYZ in Detroit. In 1997, Howard Stern radio show premiered in New Orleans on KKND 106.7 FM. January 21st, 1813, the pineapple was introduced to Hawaii. Yay, pineapple. Love that. <laughs> I know, I didn't know that. 1903, <laughs> Harry Houdini escaped from a police station in Amsterdam, pulling That's off funny. one of his great 
magical tricks, which is cool. In Escape ni- from prison. <laughs> well, that was one of his tricks. He's doing so. 1946, U.S. President Harry Truman set up the CIA. January 23rd, we got Elizabeth Blackwell, uh, 1849. She became the very first woman in the U.S. to earn a medical degree. Another big milestone for women. Uh, 1969, the band Cream released their very last album and titled it Goodbye. In January 24th, 1908, Lieutenant General Robert Baden Powell published Scouting for Boys as a manual for self-instruction to indoor skills and our outdoor skills rather in self-improvement. That book became the inspiration for the Scout Movement in 1935. The first can of beer, Kruger's Cream Ale, is sold by American company Kruger Brewing Company. In 1984, Apple Computers unveiled its revolutionary Macintosh personal computer, which changed the world, no, along with, you know, the iPhone, which was just a couple of weeks ago we discussed that. So, you know, made some major changes in the world. Uh, January 25th, 1955, Columbia University scientists developed an atomic clock, which is accurate to within one second over the course of 300 years. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's crazy. That's amazing, you know. And in 2018, last year, on uh, the 25th, Doomsday Clock was moved by 30 seconds to two minutes to midnight by the bulletin of the atomic scientist. That's the closest it's been since 1950s. 1971, Charles Manson and three women followers convicted of the Tate LaBianca murders. And in 1974, Dr. Christian Bernard transplants the first heterotopic heart <laughs> transplant, That's which is mouthful. adding a donor heart without the removal of the old one. Didn't even know that was possible. I know. That's, that's pretty wow. amazing. It didn't work for me. <laughs> I still have a heart, though. Hey. You need a brain, right? Well, yeah, but that's, they have <laughs> not. Can you do a double brain? Brain, <laughs> brain transplant, yeah. Still <laughs> working on if it. If I only had a brain. <laughs> okay. <The> scarecrow. <laughs> January 26th in 1784, Benjamin Franklin expressed unhappiness over the eagle as America's symbol. But we all know how that turned out, don't we? In 1962, Bishop Burke of the Buffalo Catholic Diocese declared Chubby Checker's twist as impure and banned it from all Catholic schools. Now that's crazy. Can you believe that, Earl? <laughs> no, the I'm twist. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was jealous of he that. Threw so. <laughs> he threw a hip out. <laughs> also on that day, January 26, 1998, the infamous words, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, were spoken by President Bill Clinton. So. Now, January 12th, right? 1969. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, great. that's crazy. <laughs> nice. Congratulations Super on that Bowl milestone. Three. You have to be Super really proud. Three. That's three. that's really nice. Three. I caught the first kickoff. I just wanted to. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Absolutely. Wow. Did they do the Roman numerals back then? I was just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just going to say, you know, the scoreboard. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Did you have automobiles back then? The scoreboard work, though. I mean, really, because you know how hard it is to, like, hit things in stone? I mean, because it's tough, man. You get seven. And, oh no! It, no, we're, they're going to take it back and then count it. Okay, well there we go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Earl, we have, we have people watching. Me, you? <laughs> Good best friend. <laughs> used to be. Uh-oh. Emphasis on the used to be. See, oh, I, I no. feel I feel so safe behind this desk, even though I know I can get tackled over it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't question That's hilarious. We we have some people in the chat room mentioning some things. Uh, Victoria says, Todd, your ni- she says, Todd, your niece is watching. Cool. Let's see. Is she of 18? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm asking. Some people are already ragging on your haircut. <laughs> on my haircut? Joe says, what do you, Scott, what do you do, Scott, join the military? That's so opposite of your have younger you seen, days. Have you seen how stupid I look the last couple of shows? I mean, it, it looks worse than this. I mean, you know, it's been a, been a long time, and I mean, I... Okay, I look stupid. Sorry. Your wife says that you wanted it long again, but she can't go through all the crazy phases get, with it. I get the weird, you know, my hair the bad thinning. And, Speaking you know, of like Scott's stuff. wife, I'd like to say congratulations to these guys <sighs> and happy anniversary, brother. Yeah, happy anniversary. Yeah, January 20th, me and uh, my wife have been together well, 15 years. That's a long time, man. It really is. Yeah, well, no, it was 15 short years. <laughs> short years. It went by so fast. I'm going on 13. 
Yeah, and you just had a baby too, didn't you, Mike? Just had my fifth baby. Congratulations, Mike. How many how many babies you got? I have two, and I made sure I didn't have any more. Scott, no, (laughs) man, you got plenty more. Plenty more years left. Well, I can't say that. Isn't your quiver supposed to be full? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I have two kids that I know about, and one's you know, yeah, I got a boy and a girl. I mean, that's all I need, really. It's fulfilled. Six years. That's right. It was, wasn't it? Very nice. You're adding. The Bible says multiply. Your be quiver should be full. Scotty. Yeah. Okay, multiply. wife. You know, <laughs> Michael said we need to multiply. Okay? <laughs> and, and it's, it's be ready for right later. Here, and the fact of the matter is, is we we never even tested the vasectomy. You, you know, we st- you still oh, can no. get pregnant. And the fact of the matter is, is oh, you know no. something, we got to just keep on trying. Keep on trying, even, you know, until it takes. Right? I guess. Okay, well, I, I don't know. That's How old are your kids? My kids are 11 and 13. 11 and 13? Yep. Man. I got a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old and a 17-year-old. Wow. Well, that's, you know, that's a good, you know, good uh, good age difference. And do I they mean, help you out you with know? the little babies, the older ones? Uh, well, they, they help out with the small, the younger ones. So we yeah. have a... A 19 month and a day after Christmas wow. baby. See, we went back awesome. to work. My kids like to beat each other up. I'm uh, not sure why that is. I mean, I've heard a sibling rivalry, uh, but you know what? My kids, it just, it's, maybe it seems it happens, worse. It happens. It makes them tough. It, maybe it seems worse so since they're my kids. No, all kids fight. All kids fight. They have to. It's what prepares them for life, you know? So just let it, as long as they're not smashing and drawing blood, I think that you're okay. You know something, though? I want to give my kids, like, you know, karate lessons and stuff. But what I'm worried about, yeah, it teaches self-discipline. I'm worried that they're going to use it on each other. Yes, they you will know, definitely do yeah. that. Racing yeah. jujitsu, yeah. like, you know, they'll be tapping out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, you they know, will. eventually it will be me, too. You know, that's the problem. <laughs> dad, can I go out? Ah, arm bar. Yeah, you can go. You can go. Yo, that's why yo, dad I'm has to out. take karate Well, they can always them. be your bodyguard. <laughs> they may practice on you. Better watch yeah. it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That is part of the problem, too. But Well, we have some famous birthdays for this week, and there's kind of a lot, so I'm going to go through some of them, not all of them. Just go through some. <laughs> um, January 20th. If you can believe this, George Burns, American actor, comedian, and singer. I didn't realize that he sang. He was born in 1896. Was that really right? <laughs> I was like, wow. And he died in 1996. Um, Slim. Yeah, 100 years old. Yeah. Slim Whitman was born in 1923. He was an American country singer. Supposedly, he was born here in Tampa, Florida. And he died in 2013. We have astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin, Gemini. Well, Junior, Gemini 12, Apollo 11. He was born in 1930. And Paul Stanley, he was, um, you know, everybody knows who he is from rock guitars from Kiss. He's 66. He was born in 1952. So happy birthday. And also Tracy Guns, LA Guns, and Guns and Ro- the Guns of Guns and Roses. He's 52. He was born in 1966. We have a few, let's see, on January 21st, we have Christian Dior, French fashion designer. He was born in 1905. Jack Nicholas, American golfer, winner of 18 national titles. He was born in 1940, and I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> also, on January 22nd, we have Bill Bixby, American actor, member Incredible Hulk, Incredible my favorite Martian. Hulk. He was born in 1934. He died in 93. Also, uh, the singer, he was from Australia, Michael Hutchinson, or Hutchins? Yeah, Hutchinson. Hutchinson. He's from NXS. He was born in 1960, and he died in 97. And we also have Brian Jones, sports radio TV host and former NFL linebacker from the New Orleans Saint. He was born in 1968. So he would be, what, 50? 51? 51. 51. 51. 51. Oh, man. Don't forget math. <laughs> Please don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> I, know, right? well, I knew it was 51 because it was yeah, 50 50 years like, ago, yeah. 1969, yeah, we won. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and let's see, we got John Hancock. He was born in 1737. <laughs> American merchant and statesman who was first to sign the Declaration of Independence. And he died in 1793. All right, so now I got a cool thing to say about that. Okay. Um, you know that John Hancock's the, the big name on the Declaration of Independence, the first person to sign that. The very, very last name on the Declaration of Independence at all the name is a relationship of mine. It's on my mom's side of the family. Oh, yeah? Who is it? That, yeah. Thornton. 
I don't know the first. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know the first name. I couldn't read it, but it's oh. Thornton. So, so it's technically, the very last you, name on so there, technically, so. you signed the declaration of a declaration. <laughs> De- De- declaration, yeah. yes. Declaration. <laughs> no, technically, I didn't, but a family member did. You know. So that's why they so. say sign your Jan- John Han- Hancock because the because first of John Hancock. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. exactly why. Family member signed it. What's his yeah. name? <laughs> 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 that one guy. So, the last, the last <laughs> name is Thornton. You know, no. we, we actually discussed before um, uh, George Washington's birthday a week ago, and I'm related to him through my dad's side of the family. Ah. But I'm related to the last guy well, who signed the technically, technically related to all, my mom's side. all of us are related technically. That's okay, that's true. You want to go think way so back? Too. Okay, I just That's want you to know. I do. <laughs> we have You're a, my brother. <laughs> Anita Pointer yeah. from the Pointer my Sisters. from another mother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have Anita Pointer. She has a birthday, January 23rd, from the Pointer Sisters. She was born in 48. Also, Robin Zander from Cheap Trick, rock vocalist and guitarist. He lives here in Tampa Bay yep. area. I don't know who put in Safety Harbor. But he does. <laughs> sorry, no, he lives in Safety Harbor. He's in Safety Harbor. He and he's 66. 66. Yeah. Yeah. On January 24th, so we have... if you're watching, Robin, <laughs> happy birthday, man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, he ma- one of my friends in high school married him. So I don't know still? if they're still together. I don't know if they're still together. But not a good friend? No, not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not a super good no. friend. <laughs> not a good relationship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But uh, on no. January 24th, we have Ernest Borgnine. He was an American actor. He was born in 1917. Ice Station, Zebra, McHale's Navy. He died in 2012. We also have Neil Diamond. He's 78 years old, 1941. And John Belushi, American comedian, actor, Saturday Night Live Blues Brothers. That's apropos for our, our guest pianist tonight. Love um, chat. Yeah, he, so he was born in 1949, and he died in 82. Hmm. We have a few more people. <laughs> January 25th, we have Jeff Gossett, NFL punter for Oakland Radio Raider, Raiders. I can't talk. <laughs> He's 61 years old. And Alicia Keys, she's 34. We also have a few more birthdays. Uh, Douglas MacArthur, he was born January 26, 1880. He's American General in World War II. World War II, can you say that real fast? <laughs> Jeez. He died in 64. Wow, well, is that right? 1880, and he died in 1964. That's yeah. a long time. <laughs> and also, Paul, yeah, Paul Newman, American actor, race car driver, and charity food company founder for Newman's Own. He was born in 1925, and he died in 2008. We have Gene Siskel, movie critic. Siskel and Ebert. He was born in 1946, and he died in 99. Also... We have Eddie Van Halen. He's 64 years old. He was Heck born yeah. in 1955. Nice. He's actually Dutch American. Yeah. And singer Anita Baker and comedian Ellen DeGeneres both turned 60. So you know, <coughs> why are there so many birthdays this <laughs> week? I mean, come on, man. Is, is, is everybody was trying for a New Year's baby. You missed. You know, one one thing I want to add though. <laughs> one thing I want to add is Calculate that, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm just gonna say it, Katie Seagal. She, she was born on uh, January 19th. You know, I, wouldn't, I, I don't children. think everybody should, you know, Sons of Anarchy, married with children. She's 65. Yeah, she, she looks good. Wow. And, and she you know really what? Good. She's hot, man, for 65. I would say. I, I mean, Katie, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Anyways. You know, my name's Scott. It, the, the, flip, <laughs> the flip side of the coin. I mean, of course, we had some deaths, and I mean, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, Audrey Hepburn, back in 1993, on January 20th, um, you know, she died at age 63. Um, on the 21st, um, we have uh, Connie Sawyer. She was an actress, a clown princess of comedy. She was in Pineapple Express, Dumb and Dumber. So the thing is, is uh, 105 years old. I mean, that's like the the, the oldest actress still going. And I mean, she was she like, worked she was at like comedy. The in, That's what kept her going. For those of you that don't know who she is, I mean, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, I know she's been <laughs> involved in a lot of things, but dumb and dumber. She was the one in the wheelchair where, you know, Jim Carrey came up and said, Hey, you know, 
Old people are still used for she stole his money. I don't know. That's that's what, <laughs> that's what that she was here. Why you guys um, keep talking about old people? <laughs> hey, come on, I'm the oldest one in here. I'm seventy five years young. Really? Yeah, but you look good nice. though. I you feel know, good. A difference yeah. between twenty five with fifty years experience, I mean, tricks, my friend. Thank you. Forty five. Look, look like that's what I'm number. talking. Forty five. You, know, you hardly have any wrinkles either. What's your secret? Oh. <laughs> well, creative, baby. <laughs> happy, happiness, positive. Joy. Like, that's see, right. Joy. The joy. The joy of the you Lord know, my strength. Uh, yeah. With, with that uh-huh. said, I mean, you know, again, deaths, I don't like to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, Ted Bundy, <laughs> you're probably glad he's dead. Yeah. You know, 1989, he, he died, thank God. Um, you know, Thurlgood, Marshall, 1993, I mean, you know. Obviously, he's 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 awesome. Al Capone, January twenty fifth. You know, if you don't know who he is, <laughs> he should come back from the dead and shoot your ass. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what rock you've but, been living under. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people are glad he's gone too. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't want to spend any more time on deaths. I, I really that's don't. Perfectly so fine, man. Let's, let's, let's move on off. to the next. To, you know, uh, next so the New segment. England Patriots are facing the Los Angeles Rams for Super Bowl fifty three, the big game coming up. Patriots joined the Buffalo Bills from 1990 to 1993 and the Miami Dolphins 1971 to 73 as a third team to appear in three consecutive Super Bowls. They also extended their NFL record for Super Bowl appearances to an astounding 11. That is just incredible. The Rams won uh, with a 26 to 23 overtime win over the Saints, and I do believe they got robbed. Saints. Shame, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. The Patriots won with 37 to 31 overtime win over the Chiefs. Both games were the number one and the number two seed teams, uh, and both number two seed teams won, which is pretty wild. Uh, And both teams, both games going into overtime, that's an amazing feat as well. Uh, Super Bowl 53 is on Sunday, February 3rd at 6.30 p.m. It's going to take place Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, home of the Falcons. It'll be the uh, Super Bowl hosted at the first Super Bowl hosted at that stadium, which opened in 2017. However, this will be the third Super Bowl played in Atlanta, 17 years to the day that Brady first won the Super Bowl. Maroon 5 is going to be headlining the halftime show, and they're going to be joined on stage by Travis Scott and Big Boy. They weren't the uh, NFL's first choice, though. At least two singers reportedly rejected the invitations from the NFL, which I think is crazy. Most notably, Rihanna and Cardi B, because she supports former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Kaepernick's involved in a high-profile collusion case against the league related to his protest of police brutality and racial injustice. And the pop singer-songwriter Pink also reportedly turned down an invite. She was there before, though. You know, I... They asked me to host the halftime show, too. <laughs> and, you know, I had a couple song ideas and stuff, but I, I told them that, you know, my wardrobe malfunctioned. I mean, it happens. It's consistent, you know? So, I mean. Janet Jackson, repeat. J- huh? Oh, yeah, abs- you absolutely. Know, it's a, you know, you know. the chess show. Yeah, yeah. Scott the the taco meat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't really know what to say. To be honest with you. I really don't. I mean, I'm not wearing any pants right now. But hey, you know, um, the, you know, last thing I like is as far as as far as that goes. I mean, you know, entertainment news. You know, I'm not a gossip type of guy. I mean, uh, Charlize Theron, bad Brad Pitt. They're dating. You know, I guess they were they were seen together. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago at uh, you know. The, one one of the d- events uh, didn't Sean out. Penn introduce them? Yeah, they may he may have, but I mean, <laughs> you know what? She's hot. She is hot. Yeah, is this a music show? Or what? <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Entertainment. No, entertainment Did, oh, you say oh, Brad, oh, okay. Pitt, Brad Pitt is dating someone? Sure, Charlize, Charlize, yeah. Theron. Charlize Theron. And I mean, he, <laughs> he, he just because you sing together, that means you're dating, or is this like a real? That's what they said. Is this speculation or? <laughs> well, actually, they, people they've people been saw them together. Of times, you know, so they they said, "Oh, the they, story they goes they're crazy. happy." The tabloid, and all yeah. that yeah. stuff. Where are we getting our friends? Where from? Yeah. So look. If we're right, then you heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fake news. And if, if you're wrong, we, we got it from TMZ. There yeah. you go. I, that, that's Even what that. I thought we were but on. Well, here's the thing, and, and I'm going to just say it. I mean, there's, there's some news we covered uh, last week that were like four, four or five days before TMZ. Okay. You know, we don't, we don't have somebody on the ground getting news like that. 
Oh, you know, okay. not yet, or you know, we just whatever. got D scouring the internet. <laughs> there you go, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Queen D. Queen D. Yeah. Some of the stuff I scour on the internet, we couldn't even put on the show. So, <laughs> oh, sucks, you know, no. help me. On January twentieth through the twenty-first, we had a total lunar eclipse, a blood-red wolf supermoon. According to NASA, the total lunar eclipse lasted almost exactly one hour. It was pretty cool. I don't know if you Did guys you saw it or it? not. So it was, it was on pretty late at night. It happened. Uh, the uh, the beginning exit of the Umbra was at twelve forty-three a.m. Then the moon departed that around one fifty a.m. The total eclipse ended completely around two forty-eight. It's a very rare total lunar eclipse happening at the same time as a supermoon. There's a little more to it than that, though, because lunar eclipses can only occur during a full moon. And uh, this one is extra special because it was also a supermoon. And the supermoon occurs That's when right. the moon is full and closest to the Earth in orbit. Um, the moon was straight up in the air in perfect alignment with the sun and the Earth, while the moon on the opposite side of the Earth from the sun. The Earth cast two shadows on the moon during that eclipse. The uh, numbra, which is a partial outer shadow, and the umbra, which is a full dark shadow. When the full moon moves into the Earth's shadow, it darkens, but it doesn't completely disappear. And sunlight passing through Earth's atmosphere lit it up in a dramatic fashion, turning it red. It looked very blood red here, and it was pretty cool to see. And that's so your uh, that's your that's science news yeah, for, for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so but that, that, you know, the that's too late for me to stay up. <laughs> Maybe early for you. Yeah, you yeah, know, it, it the was kids wild. doing like a, 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 a science report. <laughs> <laughs> Just pause I'd run show, out write and write that down. Like, okay. I, got it. I went out and checked it out. It was pretty cool to see. It was pretty cool. Some people got really nice You're a pictures. night out. Yeah, yeah. Where was it? Was I heard out. on the news that some couple got ran over by a cop because they were in the middle of a parking lot looking at the super moon. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. They didn't die I, I or didn't anything. I did hear about that, but you know, come on. What the heck was the cop? No, the cop was looking at the super moon or he was texting on his phone or something. <laughs> 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 what was that? I don't know. Could have been that. Um, you know, the, the other thing is uh, uh, Ultimate Jam Night, uh, NAM. you know, out to, some of you guys may actually be out there or whatever. I mean, we got, uh, you know, it features Steve Vai, Billy Sheehan, Ricky Rocket, uh, Doug Altridge. I mean, it's a, it's a good show, man. It's a good show. I mean, musicians or, or people that are, you know, into, you know, all the gear and whatnot. I mean, that's the show to go to. Yeah, yeah that absolutely. is definitely a show to go to. As a matter of fact, uh, I've always wanted to go to Nam, especially yeah. to see that Ultimate Jam. Absolutely, cool. absolutely. And I mean, that uh, that particular thing, you know, it's not Nam, but it's it's held uh, all the time at uh, Whiskey A Go Go. Yeah, Whiskey Go Go. But it's all a part of Nam stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's a great place for it to be. So you know, we could talk about that a lot, but I mean, with the guests that we have on the show here today. I'd rather spend spend more time with them. I, I absolutely exactly. agree, man. So really let's uh, let's check out what's going on and uh, talk to our guests. So before we get into uh, talking to Mr. Earl and Mike here, uh, just want you to know that the 2019 Full Throttle um, Motorcycle Expo and, Expo and Bike Builder Invitational is happening at the new Burt's Barracuda in Harley-Davidson on 49th Street, right across the street from Quaker Steak and Lube. That's happening February 7th through the 10th. It's going to have 12 bands total, seven national bands, and uh, including Bad Company, the lead singer, former lead singer from Bad Company, Brian Howe. Also going to have um, Autograph and Lita Ford there, Vixen, Winger, Jasmine Kane, and Jack Russell's Great White, as well as a few uh, really killer local bands. You're going to want to check that out. Um, things get kicked off Wednesday the 6th with their Bike Night Expo pep rally from 6 to 10. The sound effect is going to have a tent there. It's going to be our very first live appearance that we're going to be there. That's we will be cool. there getting some interviews for the show. So stop by and say hi to us and uh, be sure to support the event sponsors while you're there. You can find out more information on that event and their sponsors on our Facebook page. And we want to thank uh, Full Throttle Magazine and that Motorcycle Expo for allowing us to be a part of that. No, that's, that's going to be a good time. Yeah. You know, we get we got a we got a lot of uh, you know a lot of a lot of people coming to town. Um, you know Gladys Knight, who actually well she's playing at Ruth Eckert Hall on the on the twenty fifth. Uh, she's been getting a little you know a little bit of odd feedback as far as singing the national anthem, which I'm sorry guys, I don't feel that she deserves. It's a it's a national anthem. 
I mean, you know, come on, man. I didn't hear you know, about that. <clears throat> you know, just just like it, you know, the few the few people that turned down the, the halftime show, it has to do with, you know, Kaepernick and and you know him, uh, you know, kneeling. I mean, it just happens to be during, you know, during the national anthem, but that has nothing to do with it. It it really doesn't. So I wouldn't give her a hard time about that. Did you see that where um, Jimmy Buffett, after he was done singing, he dropped the mic? I didn't get what that was. That supposed to be like sarcastic or something I don't, I don't you didn't see that well i don't, I don't remember I don't know maybe why i was drinking the mic other night you say gladys knight was, was, was what no gladys gladys maybe. knight's uh, she's doing the national anthem okay so she's she's singing it okay you know people are giving her a hard time for doing it oh. which i mean come yeah. on yeah it's yeah. The, it's the I national anthem i mean i don't want to name you know names but there's been people that have that have done pre-recorded ones or people that have done their own version that really care for i mean you know come on she's she's a big name you know that that should be pretty cool and pe it's, people it's are giving her a, a hard time for just participating because she, they believe because she's a person of color that she should be on this kaepernick riff am yeah. i right yep. okay. yeah right. yeah absolutely well, yeah. absolutely right, yeah. well you're always going to have people who want you to stand but it's uh it's not a everybody thing right. you know it's right. only the people who feel like they should stand and have a voice for that particular uh, problem that's going on in the world. Not everybody should be forced exactly. to do that. Right. Uh, not everybody has, you know, is, is interested in those things. Or many people have different experiences in life. Sure. Uh, and, and don't have, you know. But uh, I, I don't think that that's fair. I, at I all. don't think so. Either. Well, I just like to add to that real quick. Uh, when I think about, yes, a veteran chose Kaepernick to kneel. And when you kneel, and I've learned through the years, that's paying reverence respect. to what they respect. Yeah. And yeah, it's not really about the national anthem. It's about what he was talking about, injustice. Right. And that's the key factor. I mean, And that is it. And just by experience, I lived through that. So I'm 75 years old, so I've witnessed it. I love the national anthem. Right. I, right. I love America. but. There are certain things that are going on, and that was the key. Even when you think about Martin Luther King Jr., protests make change, and that's what it's all about, because we're all God's children, exactly. and we should all be free. And the bottom line is to show love in this world, yeah. and that's the key factor. It ain't yeah. even about all of that. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so there's some other shows going on around town. Just make sure that you go out there and check them out and support them in places like Ruth Eckerd Hall, Janice Live, Van Wiesel Perform Performing Arts Center, Emily Arena. You can find out about all the shows that are coming into town uh, through their websites and stuff. And uh, But let's get into the conversation with my man Earl, Super Bowl three champion New York Jets, and former Tampa Bay Buccaneer Michael Clayton of the Super Bowl forty six champion New York Giants. Again, welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate this. <laughs> Yeah, With two a giant and a Jen in the room, it's only Michael Clayton that I'm setting. Yeah, you go. <laughs> I, I got to give him credit, I man. Feel lucky. He's cool, man. <laughs> He's a blessed man. Yeah, that's a rare thing, right? Yeah, yes, so. sir. I'm next to football royalty, right? There you <laughs> go. That's awesome. So, Earl, 50 years, man. That's a milestone. Oh, you say I'm 50 years old? No. <laughs> 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 that, that's a blessing, really. I, I'd say it humbly uh, that had the opportunity and special playing against my hometown team. But I, I just want to make a thing, because everybody talks about Joe Namath's guarantee. Well, I want to give you the true story tonight. Joe Namath guaranteed the victory on Thursday, because he said guarantee. My grandmother, who was a praying lady, said that we're going to win on the Monday. That's what my family said. So there you go. she she predicted. You know, Joe made the guarantee, but she <laughs> predicted, okay? <laughs> I just want to tell you, and that's the true story. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> so how did you get into football? You know, it, was it something you always wanted to do when you were a kid? Or? No, I never played Pop Warner. I never played really? high school. The first time I ever put on a football uniform, I even had trouble trying to put it on. Wow. <laughs> it was when I went to college. That's the first time I ever wow. played tackle. I thought I was going to get killed when they hit me up. <laughs> uh, like, that's I'm crazy. interested. So how did they, what did they recruit you from? I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> They came down to see this guy by the name of Emerson Boozer from Augusta, Georgia, where my wife is originally from, Augusta, Georgia. Can you believe it? Yeah. And Boozer and I played in school at Maryland Eastern Shore, Maryland State at that time. 
And uh, they came down to see Boozer, Walt Michaels, and they saw this kid out there running 80-yard touchdown, kickoff, punt return, and all that. And uh, they said, hey, come on, come on to the New York Jets. I wasn't very fortunate like you to be a, a number one draft oh, choice. Can you believe it? I was a free agent. I had to make it the hard way. Well, no, well, I ain't complaining. Well, that's consistent with your story. I'm, I'm interested. You didn't play high school football? Never. All right, yeah. you got you went to college to play football, or you went to college and just walked on. Like how did walked that... on? Went there and I said, and my roommate was the third string quarterback, and he said, "Earl, man, you got good speed and everything. You're a pretty good athlete." He said, "You should come over to the locker room," and I came over there, and he thought I lost my key. He said, "I was just kidding you." I said, oh, "Man, yeah. you. <laughs> hello, good night." I'm in the now, house. Now I did play basketball. You changed your life. Back in the day, and I ran track in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, so God bless me with a little athletic wow. ability. That's yeah, neat. and come in the big game, the Super Bowl three that wow. made That's the cool. NFL what it is today. Playing really against my cool. hometown team too, the Baltimore. So how many Baltimore years did you Colts. play football? Was it Baltimore? Three years. Oh, Baltimore Colts. Baltimore, Baltimore Colts. 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 Baltimore Colts. Hey, got, yeah, come on. We had to get used to that Indianapolis Colts. Come on, it didn't yeah, ring right. Too long of a and name. they still mad in Baltimore about them sneaking out at nighttime. <laughs> I got to tell the story. <laughs> Snuck out of town, moving vans. Oh, good night. They've never wow. forgotten that. Oh but that gosh. we're forgiving people though. That's a good thing, True man. Death. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. So, Michael, how about you, man? When did you get your start? I mean, do you play, you know? I played uh, growing up seven years old. <laughs> I started playing with the South Baton Rouge Rams, was my first uh, team and tackle. I actually played with the same organization that Ward Dunn played with. Did you really? Uh, nice. Growing up, I played with Ward Dunn's brothers, Travis and Bryson. We were on the same team. Ward was like this Baton Rouge hero. And everybody who, who played football wanted to be like Ward Dunn. Mm. So since I was seven years old, played football, uh, learned the game the tough way, running heels, pulling tires, old school football, smash <laughs> mouth, quarterback and linebacker. Uh, oh. And uh, grew up love hitting. Um, I was uh, went to a small high school, Christian Life Academy, a small 2A school. Uh, coach Saban comes in and uh, he becomes the head coach of the LSU Tigers. Uh, he comes to my school almost every right. other day and lets me know that, man, you, you, we want you on our team. And I knew nothing about Division I college football yeah. because my whole family went to Alcorn State University and I grew up wanting to go to, to Alcorn because yeah. Steve McNair was there. He was a Heisman Trophy runner-up. Uh, against Rashawn Salam, I think his, his name was. And uh, I was a ball boy. My uncle was a coach there. So every weekend uh, we would travel to see Alcorn State. And that's all I knew is SWAC, right. SWAC football. Yeah. So uh, I, I learned college. about Division I uh, college football when Coach Saban came to my high school. And uh, the rest was history. Hey, uh, I had a, had a great career at LSU, won a national championship. Uh, and as Earl said, I was I was blessed to be a, a, a first round draft pick, and uh, had a great rookie year here in Tampa. Uh, and the other years, not so much, but a, a, a learning experience, a, a, a great for my career to learn the the ups and downs, and learning about identity. I think that my my tough time here in Tampa was a, was about finding identity when football has always been your identity and you lose football the way that you've, you've played it for so long mm -hmm. and you're lost. And then you have to search to find a true identity, which is what kind of catapulted my spiritual life and my spiritual journey of finding God and, and letting him use me. And uh, it helped me in my, in my latter years. I got fired from the Bucks, picked up by the Giants, and ended up winning – Super Bowl 46, spent two seasons with the Giants and Amen. played for a great coach and Coach Coughlin, learned a lot of things and was able to utilize a lot of the things that I experienced uh, with Tampa uh, in New York to be a leader and uh, was able to be a part of that team. So Fantastic. very important. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So Earl, you are uh, known throughout history as somebody who changed the game of football, the Heidi game. Oh, good. Now, you had to go there. <laughs> it took me 20 years. Okay, uh, let me explain that. Hey, you knew hey, I had to bring my, that up, my, man. My, uh, Doug, our, our good old 
friend over here, the Jet fan. But anyhow, uh, it's, it's funny. Um, we're playing the Raiders. We're winning the football game. So uh, defensive safety got kicked out of the game. If you sneeze wrong back in the day, they'll throw you out. And they wow. scored a <laughs> touchdown. And they don't kick off to me. And, you know, and we're going to run the clock out, you know. Heck yeah. But to keep television on his uh, time schedule. So they kicked off to me, and I'm running the kickoff back. My own man knocks the ball out of my hand. It goes in the end zone. They score two touchdowns in nine seconds. Wow. Now what happened, they figured the Jets had won, so they're going to go to keep television in this order on time and go to this nice little girl named Heidi. <laughs> and man, literally, <laughs> and i got to tell you a real quick story. My buddy... Just happened to be in the car when we were playing the game. So when you go in the tunnel in New York, of course, you use all signals. And he came out the tunnel. And the New York Jets lost the game to the Oakland. <laughs> oh, they almost wrecked his car. And I tell oh you, it God. took me 20 years to talk about that game. But it's called the famous Heidi game. But when it counted, when they came back, my good our teammate Joe Namath said, Earl, we'll get them when we get into New York. And we beat them for the American League Championship Very nice. at yeah. Shea State. Wow. And yeah. that's my story, and I'm sticking, sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. No, like, no, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. Well, not only that, but, uh, you know, playing wow. in Super Bowl three with the Jets, you also changed history um, in regards to the league, right? Oh, yeah. It, it helped the league merge. And, uh, and talent is talent. And uh, we were the difference in the two leagues was that we were a wide open throwing football league, which is exciting. People love offense. But the, the key factor, the game ain't changed. change. It's still blocking and tackling. But the most important thing is just the excitement of it. And back in the day, and you can attest it to this guy, lockdown corners. If you couldn't play <laughs> man-to-man lockdown corner, you wouldn't make the team. Playing zone in the red zone just blows me away. That's why the Brady's and the Mannings and what have you are great quarterbacks. Having a field day. They haven't field day because you're throwing to a spot. Right. You ain't going to be there. It's all about timing. And it drives me crazy. But that's okay. <laughs> so the game you is know, still great. With, with that said, I mean, how, how do you feel the, the, the game has changed the most throughout well, the years? Well, I mean, the, the, the game is faster. And, 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 and with all these new technology, they can even study now. But if the quarterback studies the most, they're going to have the most success. Because it's still mental. The game is still mental yeah. more than physical, really. Yeah. And as yeah. Earl said, it, like he played in a, in a passing league. I think that the, you know, over time the game uh, evolved into a very physical game and a ground pounding game running. Now the game is going back to passing we, because of the rule changes and defensive backs can't touch a receiver oh. or he'll get a penalty. So it's kind of not fair lopsided towards the offense where you have a lot more to give in the passing game you yeah. can be more creative with schemes you you have an advantage so a lot of uh, offenses utilize that if you can get some speed on the edge without a db being able to cover you or That's touch you i didn't know or touch you good the, the offensive guy has an advantage so uh it, it's changed in terms of that but at the end of the day Whoever can establish the running game in combination with the passing game, whoever can do both will be the most successful teams as we've seen in these playoffs. Whoever establishes that running game usually wins the game. We would hit you if you got up in the stands, we'd hit you. Yes, indeed. We used to close on. <laughs> we'll lay you out. And, see, nowadays, so you do that, you get a penalty. I mean, Good you night. look at the quarterback wrong, you get a penalty, I think, yeah. nowadays. I mean, yeah. oh, man. That's the moneymaker. Yep. You yep. got to protect the money, man. And running out of bounds on a kickoff and punt return, they were running me out of New York on that. <laughs> oh, good gracious. <laughs> like you said, they're protecting the money. Protecting the money. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd like to touch, you know, just touch on, on the poll that we did, you know, and I want to get back to you guys because actually I had more fun talking to you guys. You know, the poll that we had this week uh, had to do with uh, commercials on the Super Bowl. You know, during the Super Bowl, I mean, there's you know, there's some people that, I mean, there's some people that aren't football fans that'll just tune in just for the commercials, um, for the yeah, polls. They're the funniest commercials oh, of the yeah. year. Oh, they yeah. better be though for how much they pay. That's yeah, yeah that's crazy. Sure, you know, <laughs> they want to make them memorable, of course. So, so d you know, d 
what we did is we put a Budweiser against Doritos. <laughs> you know, who has the best commercials? Now, here's what I, I don't, you know, I don't even want to answer that yet. I want you guys to answer that. And let's, hey, and let's any, start with Mike. Anything that you can eat oh, automatically <laughs> wins. <laughs> <laughs> automatically wins, you know. Uh, I love Doritos. And they're though, addictive. Man. That's what's bad about them. You can't just, just eat one. one. <laughs> you gotta eat the whole bag. <laughs> the cheese all you know, over your hands. I'm, I'm usually, I'm usually uh, having like a Super Bowl party at my house, and I'm, a, I'm a good uh, host. So during the breaks, I'm usually. What is Asking questions. What time are we drinks, supposed to be there again? Uh, you know, show up at uh, 12. Okay. You're not inviting well, yeah, us, guys. I know that. I'm the guy Invitation parking the, only. I'm the guy parking the cars. I know that. Yeah, uh, okay. No, no, you, you, you'll be there in the house. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. But I, I, I don't, uh, you know, I think when, once you get hit on the head for a living for a certain <laughs> amount of time, you don't, you don't remember those uh commercials you do get a good laugh but uh i i really i don't uh, know the rapping i remember the doritos commercials they were rapping with buster rhymes and the little <laughs> short guy from game of thrones that was that wasn't uh, last year that was a year was that, that was, was, year that, before, was that the year before I, I think so but they're still going they're now. still i remember they're still it, going uh uh and also uh the voice black guy voice uh oh my goodness Kind of looks like Earl Christie here. <laughs> it's a good-looking guy, then, huh? Oh, le legendary uh, bl black actor. He has the voice on on History Channel. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Night. What is his name? How am I forgetting? Samuel hey, we Jackson. Took, no, not no, Samuel. No, no. He's older than we, Samuel. We took too many hits. We got it. Oh my Which goodness. Case? I took too many hits, but they're different kind of hits than you. <laughs> oh, I can't believe, I can't I'm believe that. I'm sorry about that. Well, can I tell him? I think my it's kids are live right now. My, 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 blade, my brain that's is. That's it, in, in a nutshell. I want to Morgan get Freeman. Morgan yeah. Freeman. Yeah. That's who it is. Because yeah. I was thinking, Morgan you know, Freeman. You know, oh, who, do you want, who do you want to, you know, if somebody's going to talk about uh, oh, know, talk yeah. about your life, you know, I'm thinking that's oh, yeah. that's going to be the guy, except he's going to take a couple hits. So what do you think, Earl? I mean, you yeah, know. hands down, Budweiser, man. <laughs> oh, school. <laughs> hey, no, come on. Seeing those great Cardell horses or whatever they call them. Clydesdale. You guys, are not, you. you guys are not making this easy. And here's, here's why. Well, and this is the whole reason he's bringing it up right now. You guys just want split down the middle. Yeah, but it, it is split I down, split split down win, the middle right now. It's split down the middle. We're, we're at 50-50 right now. Really, on the poll? On the yeah. poll, yeah. 50-50. It's the closest poll we've ever had. We split can, right down the middle. Come on, man. So we, we I mean, if you had a Budweiser in, in the back, I may, I may have flat I don't drink it. at all, but I'm just saying, I just love them horses. Well, yeah, they got, they've got the classic ones. little frogs. Yeah. so cute. Bud. Budweiser. Come on, uh, man. You remember uh, those big horses, yeah. baby. You know, yeah, the horses. Actually, that was the funniest Budweiser commercial I think they ever did when they first put the, the frogs out and they were doing that. I think those oh, were by right. far the funniest Budweiser ones. Yeah, but, you most memorable. Yeah. Yeah. But Bud's always been classic for those Clydes. Yeah, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. Yeah, what do you think, Dee? So. What, what do you think? Budweiser I, or? Probably Doritos. Doritos? She Some just loves the funny. Doritos. That's I don't even eat them anymore. I drink Budweiser no more, and then eat Doritos. So I mean, I'm not really sure. What do you think, Todd? I mean, honestly, um, you know, the Budweiser ones are classic. They're they're fantastic commercials. They're always, you know, very heartwarming and stuff with the the horses and stuff like that. And in the winter time, you know, running stuff. But uh, I gotta go with Doritos. They're they're the funnier ones. I love the fact that Doritos a few years back started making it so that. Uh, the average Joe out there could create a commercial, and if you did the funniest commercial, people were able to vote on it, uh -huh. and that commercial ended up becoming what what got played on the Super Bowl. Well, and I'm that, that's that. awesome. The, you know, the they, best commercial wasn't in the Super Bowl when uh, Big Joe Green, Mean Joe Green, did that Coca Cola. No, no, I was going to bring Come that up. Come on now, see, I was talking about. Bring that it's up. in the liquid, y'all. <laughs> <You know, laughs> see what's what's funny about that is I, I don't yeah, know. Wasn't that awesome? I think it was Saturday Night Live where you know. You're up there, and, you know, you, you get a Coke, and it was a girl, like, she took something off, and she's like, I'm going to go back and get a 12-pack right now. You know, it's like, well, you know, I, I can't do this, so it's still split. Here's what I'm going to say. You know, originally I was thinking, I was thinking Budweiser also, but here's what I'm going to say. 
I'm going to say the winner's Doritos. And, and the reason why I say that is because, because you flipped from Budweiser over to I, I honestly did. I, I, you know, I started off with Budweiser. I went with Doritos for the fact that they're more funny and you are still, even to this day, you turn on the TV right now, you're going to see a commercial from like the, the uh, time machine and in uh, in all that, they're still playing. That so I'm gonna awesome. go with I'm gonna go with the Doritos. That time machine. Yo, four time awesome. and triple in me. You know, this is called double double team. Double double team. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, they they, that's how they had to cover you back in the day. That's right. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say the winners Doritos then. That's that's what I'm gonna have to say. Now, I'm now, hungry for some Doritos. Now you have to go out and buy some <laughs> for us now, okay? Absolutely. You Make remember Dorito three Ds? Anybody remember those? Yeah, I love yeah, those, man. Why, yeah. why did you take those off the market? I mean, I don't know if it was, you know, maybe it was harder to make or whatever. Who knows? I have a maybe. question for the guys on the the chat room. It kind of might stir up some controversy, but let's do it. Amanda asked, what has happened to the officials? They seem to penalize everything now, except what they should penalize. Mm. That's Go. kind of a broad spectrum. Go, what do you think? Yeah, uh, well, I would say that um, it's a very tough job. Amen. Yeah. It's a very tough job. When you're sitting at home and you're watching things in slow motion and you're like, oh, that's easy, it's an easy call. Reality is, it is so fast on the field, it's bang, bang. And they put it in perspective when they go back and watch replay. Right. And they know that, you know, certain angles can, they can lie to you. Deceiving. Sure. Right. Yeah. And, and it's if, it's, if it's not, if it's not uh, conclusive, uh, they can't change the call. It goes back to kind of like a rule before you had instant replay. Right. Yeah. If you didn't see it, you know, you don't call it, you know. So uh, I, I don't want to hang on them too bad because yes uh, they've made some mistakes uh, but I know from uh, personally I know how tough of a job yeah. it is and just the calls that they do make uh, very you know I, I have to give them credit as well yeah, for, for the things that they do yeah see, really but nobody's great perfect real great example of what you're saying there is um, the situation with Edelman during the game where the ball actually didn't touch him at all right, and right. went right past him. But when you looked from one angle, it looked like it touched the one hand. When you looked at the other angle, it looked like it touched the other, other hand. hand. But then when you looked from the straight on shot, you could see the ball clearly missed beat both hands and missed his arm. Right. And therefore right. It didn't get called, you know, right. they got the ball back. It, it, and on TV, they don't show that, that angle that right. is clearly and definitive. Right. It yeah. didn't touch him. Right. So everybody's like, you know, giving the referees a hard time, especially the fans of, you know, of the opposing team. It's like, come on, you're cheating. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's easy how you could see that, you know, from one angle where somebody might be standing from, you know, a, a ref standing off to the side might see that and think that ball well, touched yeah, Oh, you're right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Understandable. Right. But, but it that. drives me crazy when they talk about conclusive. When you see what you see, remember when they took it out of the game, I, I th thought I would go crazy. Yeah. But they put it back in. It is what you see if you look at all the angles. Yeah. You're saying not enough conclusive. Well, Come that's, on. That's where technology has come into play yes, very, right. very well with uh, technology and, and television and the multiple yes. camera angles and the sky cams and exactly. everything like that. It's made it so that you can look at it from all these different angles and really see exactly where that ball's bouncing, yeah. what's happening and stuff. Now, on that note, how about the ones they don't see? We have, to, we <laughs> have to go here, man. Call. We have yeah, we to go. have to. I mean, you have Let's to talk stop and think game. about this last game. Oh, goodness. Do you think that the Saints got robbed of the Super Bowl this year? Because in my opinion, I would have to say yes, absolutely. I have to say yes, too. There was two reasons to call that play, yeah. to call that penalty, and neither one of them were called. Well, you know, um, it depends on which, you know, how, you, how you're looking at it, you know. Uh, some angles, um, the ball is 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 going past or equal with the with the receiver and then past him. Maybe the referee is not not looking uh, directly at the player and the ball, seeing it in his peripheral vision. Maybe he's saying that ball was passed already, and and then he got hit. Okay. So, wasn't even too so well, well, <laughs> but again, I, mean, I, I understand it, what you're it, saying. Well, it, I understand it, what you're if, saying. If for saying. you to say that, you're looking at it from a front view where you don't know where the That's ball true. actually is. It may look like that, 
But from a side angle view, a side angle view may show a different angle and may say, well, that ball is past them already. Now, that's right? that's the best. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I just want to say he's a wide receiver and I'm a defensive back. <laughs> yeah. Now, he's from the wide receiver <laughs> perspective, okay? The camera don't lie. Okay, you run it in slow motion and stop that ball right there. Okay, that's a penalty. <laughs> Claire. Yeah. So, uh, so let me ask you this. They have the opportunity um, when there is a penalty that's called mm -hmm. to review that, or review a certain play and stuff, and, and even overturn that. So do you feel that they should have the opportunity to review a play when a penalty is not called and that they Good. they feel that the penalty should be called. Yeah, Do you, I, I, don't you think that that should be the same way that they should no, be able to review it, that? It would be too many situations in it the would game, happen. yeah. And then the game about, would be five hours long because there's so many missed calls in a game. Every time you see a player, I, yeah, I, crying well, and ranting. All right, so it's, right. It's, it's, I, it's I a get penalty, that. But what know? about one like? The situation so we're major, discussing though. that was such a major turnaround for that game. It could have been the game changer of that entire game and the reason that the Saints didn't go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Okay. So don't you think that they had a, you know, it, it was a pretty blatant, obvious non call. And I would think that in a situation like that, that upstairs, <sighs> if they have the right during the two minute morning to, review a play right. in any way, shape, I, shouldn't they also have I the chance to I at least review I something I like that? I can't say that this is what happens, but I will say this. This is what I know um, that happens. Just like in the preseason, you will see them call a lot of penalties, a lot of penalties. And then once the season starts, they'll be a little bit more lenient. Amen. Maybe this staff came together and said, we're going to be, we're going to be a little bit lenient. Because there are some calls. Man, there was a lot of game. there was a lot of no See, calls. There was a lot of no game. calls. There was a lot of no calls in the game. So you can't if you choose if you say we're gonna be lenient and we're not gonna call certain things, it has to be fair for both teams. You can't all of a sudden just say, Oh, that. that's and a he, that's a foul. And yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that that's what happened. And there's some but I do know that that referees come together and they say, just like in basketball, you know, where a, a team is being physical. They let some things go. They call it on certain day. When it's getting overboard, they're real, really sensitive, and they call those penalties. I, I understand. I'm from Louisiana, so I wanted the Saints to win without a doubt. My, my family is heartbroken right now. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, um, I know that, that it's fair, you know. The Saints got some calls that they didn't. Man, I, I well, see that, it. Yeah, I, see, I, I saw one get. kid butt plant. On on the on the Rams player's head, just run and jump and just boom. And I'm like, oh, wow. wait a minute. That, that should have been. I'm, wa I'm waiting for a, I'm waiting for the penalty. It was after the whistle. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting, and it was no penalty. I'm like, oh, okay. That's how they're calling it today. Okay. That's how they're calling it today. I, I can respect that, but let me. So let me ask you in a, maybe in another way. Uh, and I definitely get where there would be left and right these reviews. What about? Um, giving coaches an opportunity if they can throw the flag and and you know contest something why why not give them the opportunity to have a certain amount of times that they're able to throw the flag they and do contest something they do like they have three well. three times yeah you, you can throw the I think it's three times you but, can throw the flag but you can't contest the fact that there was a no call that on a blatant uh, and something that was yeah so yeah obvious. you can't right. I mean it, the game has already been extended because of the addition of the red flag. So at the end of the day, everybody needs to know it's still all about the ducats. No, of course. All right. Course, and, and, uh, and though we love the game, the most important thing is the commercials. Show me the, money. <laughs> the commercials that are the playing Davidas. during the game. Yeah, so that's it, who's paying the if, bills for what everybody. What are those times that they're allowed to throw the flag if that's included in that as one of those, you know, an opportunity? If you're able to throw the flag a certain amount of times, why – why wouldn't that part of the game be a part yeah. of that? Yeah, I mean, you know I, what I'm I would say, you know, one, one having a, a, a different color flag, like a purple flag, or you know, you get That'd one, nice. you get one challenge flag of a call that didn't go your way. And usually, when we see things that make this big of a difference, like the tuck rule was created, at, sure. uh, 
uh, after you know Oakland was held out of the playoffs or the Super Bowl, whatever that w was at this time. So when we have situations like this, it's like trial and error. We'll probably have in the near future the committee will come together. They wouldn't want. The, they don't want this. The league doesn't want this to happen because no, of it's not. a bad look bad on the league. Everything, but I mean. you have to respect the referees. Uh, people who know the game, you can go back and watch the game and say, well, it was unfair for everybody that game. You know, sure. a lot, you know, the Rams and missed some calls and the Saints missed some man, calls. It was just right. so important. So it was, yeah, uh, but I, in, in, excuse me, in, in important games, you need to be really structured and yeah. making calls You want calls them to do like better. That. You, yeah. you, you, you want you them to do better. Right. Absolutely. And just like when they play overtime in a, a regular game, you got to play till somebody wins. They should be. Right. I don't care if the game's a little longer, yeah. but you got to get it right. It's too yeah. important. And yeah. I mean, Thank you. You know, I was, I was thinking, I mean, it, you know, bringing up the Heidi Bowl again, I mean, hey. now, not, not in a bad way. No, I mean, the thing is, is this, this changed <laughs> everything. Instead of, instead yeah. of a, you know, this is an important part of the game, you don't switch to a movie or whatever. I mean, they have it nowadays where, you know, if something comes on, the game's still going on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just thought about maybe... Yeah. It's something this major. Yeah, I anticipate. Maybe a rule. Yeah. Might I anticipate those forward. those referees getting highly investigated because the 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 worst thing that can happen is people start to feel like the game is rigged. Right, yeah. and, and a when lot you of have are uh, saying that. Yeah. when you have when you have calls like that that are like, wait a minute. That's a call, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you, you and may like be not, you know, you're not you know? into people are not familiar yeah. with the, right. okay, we're going to be lenient with this call today. People don't want to hear that. You know, they want the game to call it as it is. And when you, when you put the game and its integrity in jeopardy with plays like that, that's the biggest thing that can happen. So mm -hmm. I, I anticipate those referees will have to give an explanation of what they saw. And uh, nine times out of ten, how they explain it, because the history of referees are fair, you know. Yeah. There, there's there's no there's cheating so going along yeah. going on in, in the game. You don't get to that level. I don't though. think yeah, so. Right, right. I don't think so. You know, I, I, people have paid the price. Referees have paid the price for cheating in the game, and I, I just can't believe that they're with the 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 amount of respect of the people. <laughs> Who have been refereeing for such a long yeah. time? Right. Yeah. yeah, there is no way possible, but because it may not seem fair, but what I see is what I what I saw. This camera view isn't what I saw, and if it doesn't give you that clear, it's like it's like instant replay didn't <coughs> exist. Which a lot of people are like, why do we need instant replay? Well, <laughs> it actually goes back to no, that no. concept. Right. Of instant replay doesn't play a part if if it isn't what I saw, and the p replay can confirm what I saw. They didn't see it, you know. They didn't call it. It was a no call. So for for that to you know for it to play out, it's kind of a catch twenty two. Well, they get know? graded too. Uh, officials always get right. graded. So it hurts their pocket. They, they, that's how they get the big games. Yeah, right. yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, not yeah. just any of those officials ever end up playing in the big games and, and working the big games. There's right. going to be some they fines. Right. I think right. somebody's right. going to get fined right. over this. Right. But just, you know, just like you said, Michael, I mean, you know, we're, we're looking at the best angle you can get. Right. The refs and I'm, don't and I'm have wondering, that. I, w I, didn't see the, I didn't see the full play. I would like to watch the full play again to see because kind of like sometimes you, the second person always gets the penalty. And a lot of times the referee will be lenient. Maybe they were fighting at the line of scrimmage. I want to see what happened at exactly the line of happened, scrimmage. Yeah. Maybe, I see what you're maybe saying. the ref, the, the wide receiver did something to get wide open, and the right. referee just wasn't going to penalize the panic situation that he was in. I, w I would like to see. I I'm, I'm just thinking about what could have happened in that scenario yeah, that there... would make a referee not call that, and yeah. that's one of those things that could have happened. Wide receiver grabs your face mask, and the referee didn't call the yeah, face yeah. mask yeah. on the wide receiver. All right, he gets open, and then the wire, the DB is in panic mode, penalty. I didn't call the face mask. 
so I can't call that either. Sure. Yeah. You know, so I, I would like to go back and watch the full play to kind of, you know, see, see exactly what happened yeah, in there. because they've been showing the uh, penalty. They, they show the end, they show the end, but they don't show the beginning, right, right. You And know? the people in New Jersey, and they're, they're watching the screen, so they they, take, they review all this anyhow, so. Yeah, yeah. So why, was he, so, why was he so open, yeah. you know, so kind of deal. I hear Running a, lo- back. a lawyer is putting a lawsuit against yeah, the uh, NFL that yeah, that yeah. for the Saints. What are you going to do? Now you're gonna replay the game, right? Like, yeah, well, that's we can't just, do uh, that. I mean, that's just to promote a rule or awareness that people who pay good money to sit in the seats, they don't want to be heartbroken like that. They don't want to lose yeah. a game by oh. a bad call from a referee. Yeah, don't want the referees. They're, yeah, they're okay with losing the game. The game. But when the referee takes it away from you, yes, right, like exactly. that's that's painful. That's very that's, painful. That's painful. Yeah, Absolutely. because you feel like it, it could have been your game, right? And, and you feel and you cheated, lost. You right? Feel cheated, right? right. Yeah, it's, uh, absolutely. But they were great so, games, though. Oh, they both were both. Oh, OT. I mean, they're, they're two great, games. great games. games. So, who yeah. you guys think? Uh, you know, who you shooting for for the big game? I'm shooting for uh, Tom Brady. Uh, I think that, and I've said this throughout the whole playoffs, that the team who establishes. Uh, the running game, who plays the most physical. We all know Belichick is an old school guy. Come on, Earl. You got to believe. <laughs> it's all right. painful. I know Sean McVay. If you look at how, if you look at how uh, Rob Gronkowski, how he blocked in mm. the, in the past past few weeks, uh-huh. yeah. like he is a big player a in big terms difference. of making a three yard run turn into a first down, seven yard run potential with Sony Michelle, a big play. All of all of New England uh, Patriots receivers, they block. I don't care how little they are, they all block and they get in position to make sure that the running back can get those extra yards. In the big game, that makes a big difference when your whole team is selling out. And in the NFL, we see these teams, when you're soft, you can win some games if you can throw the football. But at the end of the day, when it all matters, the most physical team wins the game, and I give it to the New England Patriots. Well, but the Rams got a great running. Team. They oh, they do. They, got an awesome they do, team. but their receivers don't block. Yeah, nice their receivers saying. don't block. I ain't worried about their offense, but they got a running back. Okay, <laughs> My, the big thing, if you put pressure on Mr. Tom Brady, he's an average quarterback. And <laughs> the Rams. Oh, oh, I don't know. Here. They're going to crush. What wait, you got? Wait, 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 Listen, the man's brilliant, but I, I'm going to give it to him. But I'm saying you got to put pressure on. He hadn't been sacked in so many games this year, the, at least the last right. five or six games. And the reason so, why the reason, the reason why solid. he hasn't been sacked, no. If you, if you go back and watch the tape, you can see how he worked the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. He's a master in yes, the pocket. He is. Not only working the pocket, but working the pocket with technique. With hands high, he's always got the ball in the right posture. Like we see Jameis Winston a lot of times, you know, he, he may get strip, strip fumbled or he may get a little lackadaisical with the ball and lose fundamentals. That's why I was on coaching this year with Coach Cutter. Like, coach the man up on <laughs> fundamentals and reinforce it every day so we don't have those little things that happen. But Tom Brady is a master in that, and Tom Brady on his worst day is an average. Okay, All right. wait a minute. Listen, on his worst day is I don't care how great a quarterback, the name of the game is blocking and tapping. I guarantee you, they run time and pattern. Even their receivers, they don't have oh. no speed team receiver. It's all about timing. Tom Brady makes his offensive line great because of his release. Right. I guarantee you. Oh, Just yeah. like the oh, damn arenas absolutely. and everything. It's all about timing. And then playing zone, if he was locked down corner, you get in his chest. Okay, you don't get down in the red zone and you play four yards off of the receiver. You get right up here because he can't outrun you. Yeah. You, you hear what I'm saying? Oh, taking okay. him back. Oh, okay. <laughs> old school. Yeah, I, I got flashbacks. Take Forgive him me. back, baby. Forgive take him back. Me. And, and see, you take made a back. good thing. He said, get physical. Teams that have been physical win championship and defense wins championship. There you Don't go. get me excited, man. No, Don't get him in. Get him in. Get in his chest. Get in his chest. You guys, you guys so beat, like beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So, I mean, you, you know, 
Oh, good pleasure. Oh, well. All right, so I, I have to ask. So, in other words, you're going for the Rams, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's hands down. I love Tom Brady and, 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 the, and the great coach. So, so, so the question, I guess, it has to be asked. Is Tom Brady the greatest quarterback to ever play the game? I would say without a doubt. Yeah. I, I'm not giving that up. Without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> and, I, and I look at the total package of Tom Brady, how he's a motivator. Like, you can look at great quarterbacks of, of the past. Like, take, for instance, Aaron Rodgers. Though he's one of the greatest quarterbacks that we've ever seen. Okay. All right. He thinks they are. All right. One of the greatest he quarterbacks is. that we've ever seen. The, the, the players who are playing with him are the only players who vouch for him. Once you're no longer playing with Aaron Rodgers, they don't have the nicest things to say about Aaron Rodgers because he, he, he and, and not his play, his personality, all right? in terms of not being a leader, which in my opinion, which is one of the reasons why they've suffered for so long, because you have to be a person and have a personality that people buy into you. You look at uh, Joe Montana, you know, Joe Montana had great quarterback. All right. But he was a little, a little, he wasn't trying to train anybody, you know, trying to change the young, train the young uh, Steve Young. You know, he didn't want the guy taking his job. Yeah, and he was yeah. real particular about, you know, how he carried himself on the team. Uh, but when you look at Tom Brady, the stories that I hear are just, he's just a personal guy. Yeah. As, along with the football brain, along with the success that he's had, you know, I, I have to give it to him as a total package quarterback. Hey, this is my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. He's burning over I'm, here. I'm a, okay. Sportsmanship, I don't know. The Tom Brady, okay, right now, the best quarterback, I'm mean, talking about whether teammates love him the most, is Aaron Rodgers because he can use his legs, okay? I, I, I even put even little what we call the, the guy from Seattle, Russell, Russell, Wilson. Russell, Wilson. Russell Wilson. I call him the magician, okay? Now, I look at the John Unanis, okay, and I look at Drew Brees, Mm. will probably, if he stays healthy, surpass what you call your buddy Tom Brady. And you look at statistics, too, but you you, you got to look at people around you and all those type of things. Now, if you talk about what's the most valuable player, I'll give an example in basketball. Who's the best player, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? I've watched Michael Jordan his whole career, but hands down, not hands down, but if you look at the stats and rebound and all that, you got to go with LeBron James. Yes, Michael won more championships. It's just like the Bill Russell and the Will Chamberlain comparison. I mean, it's opinion. But I, but I tell you what Tom Brady does better than anybody else. He makes the players around him better. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of that's, times, that's and i got to give him that there credit. Go. Yeah. i got to give that's him that I'm credit. Saying. But that because can make he didn't all the difference up. in the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I'm not giving it to him yet. I, I, I ain't finished with the new breeze yet, okay? And, and, and then no Montana and, great. And, and what's there, Young, yeah. guess yeah. what? I would pick Young over Montana, I'm telling yeah. you, because he could use his legs, okay? And the, all, all of those quarterbacks that you mentioned, too, had great wide receivers. Yeah. Tom Brady has yeah. done it with okay, see, and I got subpar to, guys yeah. at times. At yeah. times, and they good. Beginning subpar right. guys who have become great. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. You yeah. know, yeah. and and when they get paid X amount of dollars, Belichick gets rid of them and he he re ups with, you know. Well, I'm gonna give him the no key name factor. guy. You know what's the difference in Tom Brady and him? His coach, he's up there with Vince Lombardi. Yeah, yeah. Although. He cheated the Jets, but that's all right. We're forgiven. Okay? <laughs> I just want to throw that out there, okay? And, you know, and, and, that, and unfortunately, he didn't have to do that, okay? But uh, that that's a key factor. This man can make a game-changing plan right on the spot. Adjustment. And that's what it is in yeah. pro football. Yeah. Just like that play when they ran it in the end zone. Everybody's thinking quarterbacks need. Okay, we can guess sometime. And boy, he just did like that, boom, and right there, it opened up because yeah. they was planting in. So, but uh, uh, I, I ain't giving it up to him yet. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, <laughs> no, sir. Well, there's and, no And argument. I think about the John Unanis and stuff like that. So, and it's different errors, too. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. 
But it, it's definitely like Muhammad big, Ali big and Joe and, and Joe Lewis. <laughs> now, now, I'm going to say, I mean, you know, the positions you guys play and the success you guys have had. I mean, you know, a lot of people would love to be in your shoes. I mean, if if you had a magic wand and could have any skill set you want. Would you play a different position? I mean, if you could do anything, let's say, you know, would you want to be quarterback? I mean, would you do something different? No, I don't want to play. No, I play both ways. I was a defensive back and a running back. But I love defensive back because I like to hit people. And I ran <laughs> kickoffs and punt return. That's suicide. Michael can tell you that. <laughs> what, do you, what about you, the Michael? The teammates I mean, love you more. Because of the kickoff and punt return, of course, it yeah. took a lot of when, when did that change in the league? Was it? As far as people playing both sides of the ball like that, because that doesn't really. Oh, you don't yeah. No, it don't happen no more. No, 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 I was no. just in position because they, they right. had less people on the team, so you had to kind of double up. We even had a first string of starters going down on the kickoff in the wedge. Yeah. So, you and know. I mean, would you I, have wanted to play a different position? If, I you know, probably, if you, could, or you know, if I could change it all, I would. I would probably play, play safety. Because that was my original position, you know, Coach Say I played both ways in college, yeah, uh, college. and I just loved to hit. You know, got people who remember me playing the game. You, I blocked. You know, I I, I was I, I brought fire. You know, uh, <laughs> because it was just something that I loved to do, and I probably uh, would have played a longer time playing playing a safety uh, because I could catch, I could track the ball, and I could hit. And, uh, you know, if I you had if good I, speed, I had gr good speed. So if I could do it all over, I probably would, would be a safety. Cool. Yeah. yeah cool. And having your hands and catching too would be great for that yeah, position to you know? get some interceptions and everything. So what's the worst game you've ever played? Oh man, you, you wouldn't have for, to ask yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, for, you forget Fair those. Well, yeah, the yeah, top, yeah. you forget top. those. On, well, the, the best game I would I would hope would be the Super Bowl, but then again, I'm sure there's other highlights, you know, in your career that you are know. The, memorable. I mean, I wouldn't say a, a worse game, but there's you know, there are there are some games that stuck what out is, in my career, like when I was uh, when I was with the Giants, my last game mm. as a pro. The reason why they brought me to New York was to, you know, to block and to get the first force block. And they put this play in just for me in the red zone where I fake the block and then I run the cross and ride in the uh -huh. back of the end zone. Easy score, touchdown. And Eli throws it to me and I go up and catch it. And I'm about to score my first touchdown as a, as a New York Giant. And my heel comes down on the backyard oh, line. Man. Incomplete oh, and the worst yeah. feeling ever. The next play, Eli throws an interception. Oh, it's week shit. twelve. Oh. Week twelve. You know, we still yeah. ended up winning the game, but uh, that was my last game as a pro. Oh, you know, I wish I could have. I, yeah. I wish I could have had that back. Uh, I knew that I was better than that, uh, right. but it was just one of those moments where the field, you know, it, it all looked the same in the heat of the battle. Both of my thumbs were ripped off. Oh, I had no. surgery oh, after the, after those oh, games. My thumbs were just hanging. I'm like, oh, I'm God. like, somebody, my chin strap is broke. My chin strap is broke. Oh, they was like, no. they snapped it up and they was like, your chin strap is fine. He said, I think it's your thumb. Oh, no. I'm like, ah! Oh, no. I'm like, that's all right. I got another one. Another one. Another one. Oh, <laughs> Both of them. I said, tape it up. Oh, no. Tape it up. So they taped it up, oh, taped it up, man. and I went in the game with that. my thumbs all taped up, you yes. know. And I, you know, so I wish I had that <laughs> oh, moment back, man. you know, sure. but wow. you, you Absolutely. know, you have ups and down moments. Um, but yeah. I, you know, when you leave it all, I was a guy who left it all out on the field. So there was yeah. never just a game that you just weren't, weren't pleased because you still, you know, I blocked every play. I gave my full effort throughout the game. So I never walked off the field where I just wasn't happy with, you know, my effort. And that's really that's what it good. was all about. That's what's right. important. Right. I got yeah. two games, okay? <laughs> uh, the one that I played with the Kansas City Chiefs, or what, when you talk about leaving on the field, when you, we used to practice the kickoff return, I would run the length of the field, and this wee blue bank would just go crazy. And, 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 you know, just set that motion up, because I visualized every time I touched the ball, I would go the distance, okay? But I uh, only went 87 yards, but anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> against Only. Kansas City Chiefs, I got a broken jaw. 
man. And, Ouch. And, 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 and the That's worst football, thing. football, baby. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Broken jaw. And, and I had a choice to either pick up the kickoff or they would jump on it. And my moment, momentum took me out on the four-yard line. And Buddy Ryan would never stop talking about it because he was our special team coach. A lot of people didn't realize Buddy Ryan was a special team coach. That's how he started into pro football. And, of course, that game that somebody talked about, that little girl, Heidi, when my own <laughs> team made knock the ball out of my hand. But I didn't feel real, real bad because it really was my fault. And I never fumbled, okay, Todd? I just want to let him know that. <laughs> got to give you a hard time, I gotta my go friend. I got to watch that play. Yes. It's, <laughs> a, it, the, hey, the view is straight, okay? It ain't right. no conclusive, okay? <laughs> but it, it changed the rules of the game, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. In, in yours, you know, you're the, you're the man behind that. I mean, they don't turn away from football anymore because uh, of that. So y'all better yeah. thank me for that, that. Right. okay, man? Yeah, right. yeah. Get your commercials in. In fact, the, you know, McDonald's. the <laughs> only time the Super Bowl can be interrupted is a president. Really? In an emergency situation. Now that you told him that and he's watching, yeah. he's going <laughs> well, to see ego, how they, be they have a small I'd box like to get a now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have the, like they'll yeah. go to commercial, yeah. half the yeah. screen, yeah. and they'll still have You're right. the yeah. camera on the small yeah. box. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. Man. Yeah, man. So, so, yep, it can't yeah. cut away. So, uh, if you could have played on any other team other than the ones you've played on, if you had your choice to play on any team throughout history in the NFL, what team would that have been? Boy, mm, good night. Hey. That's a good question, Don Todd. Oh man, let me think. You know, playing in New York and playing in the big markets, so to speak. Yeah. But most of the time, I'm gonna tell you this: he was very fortunate to play with Tampa Bay because we love to play in a warmer climate. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Playing yeah. in Chicago and all that. Okay. Well, if, I, if I around, had to do cool. it all, it, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it, another team. For my position, that you just want to play with a quarterback who can throw you the ball. Right, sure. You know, in my, in my six years in Tampa, I played with 11 different starting quarterbacks. Wow. 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 You know, you and a think. rotating offensive line who, who was banged up. Uh, so yeah, it makes it hard. I had a lot of, you know, inconsistencies. And then to add the injuries that I had. Uh, of those quarterbacks, who was the best, do you think? Or your favorite, I should say. You know, my favorite was Brian Greasy because he, he would tell me in the huddle, Mike, I'm coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. That's safe, man. And, That's and we had, you know, he, he was with me during my, you know, my, my historic rookie year. Uh, but Brad Johnson was a guy who just, uh, you know, he didn't have much arm strength. So I knew that he was destined for me because I ran the slants and the quick outs, all of the short patterns. Joey Galloway was your deep guy. Wow. And so I, I would just run five yards, turn around, and Brad would throw me a soft, catchable ball Nice. Uh, that I can catch and get, get four or five yards extra. So those two guys kind of really stood out. You know, I, I played with Jeff Garcia. You didn't know if you yeah. were, were going to get the ball uh, because he was running around like crazy. <laughs> uh, Byron Leftwich, you know, he was a great quarterback. But uh, you just knew that you were probably going to get killed. I, I remember back in 2008 <laughs> against the Cowboys. Two, you're gonna get one of the hardest hits that I've ever been hit, you know, against the Cowboys, Byron Leftwich. And we, I'm, running, I'm in the slot, and we're running a, a seam route. And in practice, I'm like, Byron, listen, <laughs> when I put my foot in the ground, you got to let it go, go, man. If I get on that side of the hash, the safety going to kill me. Yeah. So I put my foot on the ground, and I take three steps. And he hasn't even started. And you know, oh, Byron had that yeah, yeah. long wind up. Yeah. I take three steps and he starts winding up, and I just know I'm about to get killed. So I, I'm looking at the safety coming. Alligator hand. And I, no, no, baby. Oh, Not no. You. I no. know, but I'm saying. I, speed, I sped up because the law of inertia says if I'm running faster than you, I'm going to win the battle. That's right. right. So I speed up and I just run through the hit. I catch it like a 25 yard gain. Boom. I get hit. I spin out of it. It's, let me see, Sebastian, I think his name, Sensabomb. 
safety since the ball. He was out for the rest of the game. Knocked yeah. himself out. Yeah. Oh, so and I, and I I go, I I, want, I, go, I I come to my senses. I'm pounding on my chest, and you can tell that I'm hurting. I'm just yeah yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah. get to the sideline. <laughs> just get to the sideline. Get to the sideline. He, he, he said go across the middle. A lot of, lot of receivers don't want to go across the middle. Oh, yeah, the, that's what that's and my we used payday, to say. Baby. Do you want any tape on your heart? Mm. Anybody need any tape today? <laughs> yeah, so you got to go crossing. But mm. the other team I would like to play for that we beat in the Super Bowl, my hometown team, because I love John Unanis, I love Lenny Moore, and that coach song song was so just great, man. Playing, I mean, that's like a dream playing against your hometown team, yes, the coach, man. Oh, good night. It don't get any better because the parents had to watch the same game. <laughs> Because the Super Bowl was going to be on national TV, although all of our games were on NBC because we were out of New York and, of course, playing with the Joe Willie neighbor. Right, yeah. no question, man. What a great human being, what a smart mm -hmm. person, and he brought us together. So you got to look at it. See, we, the kids from the South and the North come together, and Joe Namath, he doesn't get credit for that. And what you talked about is so important in that locker room and the love that we show for each other, man. Yep. That's, that's what's so great, and that's what we miss now, the fellowship, man. Is that right? That's it, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm that's talking about. I, I have a cool. question cool. just real quick about, uh, was there any type of music that you listened to to get pumped up for a game? Before you know, Excuse in your headphones me? or Motown. That's who I was <laughs> playing. Are baby. you kidding me? Pantera wasn't man. around back that then. That was real music. <laughs> oh, don't get me excited, man. Good night, boy. Uh, they used to call me Twinkle Toes, man. We were dancing, <laughs> but no, I mean, it's just awesome. Oh, you kidding me? Well, you didn't listen to your wife's music. Yeah, well, guess what? Since you brought it up, my wife played with my favorite singer of all time. When she was young, James Brown. Oh, oh man. Nice. James That's Brown, awesome. the Godfather, oh. man. And man, I tell you, <laughs> wow. oh, I loved him. For those In of fact, you who don't know, his wife is Belinda Womack, a jazz singer, and she is spectacular. Yes, yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she can bring it. God <laughs> bless. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. No, no. Oh, man, that was music. Come on yeah, now. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Temptation. Yeah. And, oh, man, I, don't get me started. What about you, Michael? A little, a little bit of everything. So <laughs> I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I grew up with a rapper by the name have, of Lil Boosie. I have family there. You know, there. so oh, Boosie. Boosie was, you know, that was my guy because we were friends growing up. And oh, he nice. Be, he, he's now this famous rapper. And uh, just remember growing up, make, him making these songs, it, it got me in the mood. But Young Jeezy, Jay-Z. Little Wayne, <laughs> you know, all of those things were, you know, I don't listen to that music no more. But uh, <laughs> that's and, what I'm saying. And, and, and I don't listen to that <laughs> hey, music no more. Okay. But it, uh, that's what got me in go yeah. mode. Cool. You know, yeah. Yeah. It, cool. it got me in a place. It put me in my dark place. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you play like, football, you get you her know, done. You're like, you yeah, 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 you had to go kill to dark place, kill them, you know, yeah. rip yeah. somebody's head off, <laughs> put them under the ground. So is it a lot like what you see in uh, in the commercials where they're wearing the headphones, and getting all yeah. psyched uh, up yeah. Yeah. the game yeah. and stuff? Yeah. I, I can't believe they're playing the music yeah. at practice, man. Uh, come on, man. It's it's amazing. The, the you change. better play that music at practice because if you go to New Orleans, they're rocking it in the stands. You're gonna have to hear it, so you better get used. You get to used it. to playing it. <laughs> playing playing with it. Believe, believe it or not, I, I love all kinds. I love yeah. gospel, definitely. I love. I even love country western because it has a story. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We, we're yeah. just music lovers. Yeah. And of course, jazz. You know, yeah. just, sure. just help you to chill. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yep. I like to listen to music that I can play in the in the in the, in the car with my kids yeah. now. Thank you, you know, so uh, yeah, I kind of listen. The the Christian rap industry has come along strong. I learned that uh, you just you want a you want a nice that's, beat. That's, yeah, exactly. Right. And so now you can lip, listen to music that's uplifting, that's encouraging, that's spiritual. Yeah. They get you in go mode. Has a and theme. that's really all I need to hear now. So little crossover yeah. church. Rap. Yeah. Crossover yeah. church. Go. The church I go right now is a hip hop church, and they bring it on. There There's no go. question that's about awesome. it. And it's turned. We've had a negative thing about rap music, but. They need to listen to Christian rap. Yeah. I think it has to do with the lyrics, though, W, to be honest. Well, with lyrics. I mean, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. It's but you are, you are what you listen to. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. True, you know? true. I mean, you, you, you connect with what you listen to. Amen. Just like people connect with the blues, you connected with the blues because you right. went through those things, yeah. you know, and experienced those things. Mm. So 
what you hear is the language you're gonna start yeah. using. Yeah. Uh, the mentality yeah. that exactly. you know, rappers talking about this and, and strippers and all of this. Yeah. You know, when you hear that and you put that in Amen. your body, yep. I just believe. I remember when I listened to that music. Mm -hmm. Those were the things that I desired. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, you know, you just gotta be careful. I'm, I'm extremely exactly. cautious of my, my kids. You know, these days, kids are so smart. Yep. Uh, and sure. I didn't start listening to rap music until, like, I was, like, you know, hardcore rap music until I was, like, 13, 14 years old, away from mom and dad. And you back know? of that, it was the but, words but, that rhyme with yeah. duck. Right, right, right. You know? But th these days, <laughs> like, our, our rated R, like, our uh, PG back in the day, that's rated R now. Amen. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> right. So the things that you hear on the radio now are like you, you didn't hear those types of things Even on the radio TV back then. Oh, like, couldn't they get away with it. Do right. That ten right. years really ago couldn't. or five yeah. years ago. I keep my radio on Joy. <laughs> there you go, Joy. I, I love it. Joy, you're all about Joy, man. <laughs> there you I go, know, baby. You are. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate you guys being here yeah, tonight. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah, overtime, man. It's a little yeah. OT, oh, 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 I'm, I'm have, hanging out with my homeboy. We could probably sit and talk to, talk to you guys for another hour. Yeah. <laughs> we have a tendency to go into OT almost every week, actually, because we can talk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no man. question about it. So uh, we appreciate you here, and uh, thanks thank so, you much. so much. We're going to uh, move on to a special video that we have for everybody. And you went past my bedtime. Oh, no. Time for you to go to bed, Earl. Okay. <laughs> we'll give you some time in the morning. So let's check out uh, In the Spotlight. Sorry someday, yeah. Thrill is gone. Thrill is gone away from me.
Lord, I'm free. I'm free from your spell. Be sorry someday. You're gonna be sorry someday. Well, we wanted to give you more of that. Uh, Sean Brown, you can actually catch him down in St. Petersburg, SeanBrownEntertainment.com, and you can check out uh, more about him and find out where he's going to be playing and stuff. He's fantastic. He's a friend of uh, my man Michael Clayton there. And Michael brought him in here to the studio. That piano he was playing on, a really cool story. That is a 1911 Gavot made in Paris, France. Um, that particular <laughs> piano... Uh, was owned by our owner's grandfather and it survived world war ii and the german ss the ss had actually taken over the house of his grandfather and they were going to take that piano with him when they left when when the uh, allies were coming into town and uh, his grandfather stood up and said no you're not taking this piano Crazy. The piano is amazing condition for being 1911 and, and i mean literally 1911 that means it it went through World War One and World War Two, right. but to survive the German SS and what they were known for doing to people's property and God, taking other to, property, it's amazing it. it didn't get demolished and just right. destroyed. Wow. And uh, Sean said that was the most amazing piano that he's ever played, which is uh, a pretty cool now thing he, for sure. He's, he's played he plays a lot. with the, Bru so the Blues Brothers. Play, and you said he produces with Blues yeah. Brothers. Yeah, so. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. He talked about the keys on that piano. It's something very unique. The feel. About the, yeah, the, that the feel. Yeah, the the play and original bone or something like that. Right, That's right. I'm saying yeah, because, I mean, uh, that piano's original and just uh, incredible condition. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful. I agree. It's got I a beautiful agree. sound. So, so I mean, I, I, you know. We're actually going to put up the entire video of him playing um, a little bit later on. And we'll put it on the website so everybody has a chance to check that out and, and view more of that. So. I mean, we, we love having you guys on the show. Thank you. I mean, really love awesome. having we you on the show. It. I mean, uh, <laughs> still got it, still baby. Got it. No, no, still take got it to the house. Look take at that. The there you take go. it to the house. Rock you know, going back to him. Oh, let's show him you no, got with, that on, big guy. Oh, look how he tucked it in, man. <laughs> ain't no you ain't gonna strip that out. That's right. now, <laughs> so, you know what? What have you been up to lately? I mean, what what's going on? What's going on with you? I mean. I thought you never had. First of all, uh, I give honor to the Creator. I, I'm very blessed to be a minister. I'm serving and living my purpose in life and nice. today, and I'm so grateful. You know, I'm in the sports, covering sports and interview. And this right here, this ball right here, is the new 
Arena Football League that's coming into town. That's right. They're going to be playing at the fairground. In town means Tampa Bay, Florida wow. in 2020. But they're going to be working out this year, uh, bringing in players and what have you. So you're going to be in treat. Indoor football, arena football in Tampa Bay. Of course, we used to love the storm that was here, and they did a great job. And so fans can come, can enjoy themselves at a good price, especially young people and the whole family. So we want to see you there. And like I said, I'm so blessed to, to be able to, uh, to serve the Lord and doing that, working in the schools, talking to kids, and that's what it's all about. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Very good. Very Earl Christie good. Com. That's Earl right. Christie oh, com. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Earl you Christie find out com. more about Earl, check it out. Love, See love, interviews love. that he's done, including love. interview with Now, Michael with that Clayton. said, you know, Michael Clayton. Mm -hmm. Michael's, Michael's got some, some new stuff coming yeah, up, too, brand I'm, new. Uh, following in Earl, uh, the great Earl Christie's footsteps, you know, a little life after football. So uh, launching MichaelClaytonSports.com. Uh, coming in a few weeks, uh, two weeks to be exact, uh, we'll be uh, discussing the latest topics and sports teams here in Florida, uh, the Bucks, uh, the Dolphins, Florida State, Miami, Florida, uh, USF, UCF, uh, all of those schools, uh, different uh, topics, uh, um, all of those things, ex especially the Bucks with the uh, new coach, uh, Coach uh, uh, Coach Arians is in town, and, uh, nice. you know, a lot of different perspectives are coming. The re-signing of Jameis Winston, how that's going to plan out. Uh, his demeanor, Coach uh, Bruce Arians' demeanor in, in the media. Uh, he, he's People are taking to him really well, you know, liking his uh, his mentality. I think the, that's a good thing the way, for the Bucks. I yeah. think it's a great thing. Fantastic. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a great thing, but it's, it's better because he's a proven guy, yeah. a no-nonsense guy. And his culture will immediately be adopted. He doesn't have to prove himself. Right. So we'll be able to, in my opinion, we have great players. He'll be able to push those guys and maximize their potential. And we'll be able to win with the players that we have or compete at a high level with the players that we have. No wins are, are guaranteed. Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles is, uh, is in the house, absolutely. Yes. Uh, you got these these. Uh, head coach mentality yeah, yeah, yeah. guys who are now uh, at the, your position coaches. And I just think that they're going to be able to, to work well. Obviously, we have to do well in the draft. Sure. We've made some misses. But if we can do well in the draft and get some young players and find a way to keep, keep a lot of our core guys, you, when you get a new coach, you don't want to lose your best players. Right, sure. and a lot of people are in up in arms about Deshaun Jackson. You know, in my opinion, he's just frustrated that we were losing. He still has gas in the tank. Yes. You put him w with a with a coach that can kind of kind of shake some of that. We're, we're all divas. All wide receivers are divas. All right. <laughs> that's that's, that, that's yeah. a given. But you can't go overboard. All right? right. That's detrimental to a team. So, the right type of culture will kind of shake out that uh, that diva that kind of goes overboard in Deshaun Jackson. And any coach will be happy. To have speed like that on the edge, Absolutely. it, will, it right. will definitely yeah. open up. So if yeah. we can make that work, taking Jameis to the next level, uh, yes. Coach Bruce Arians, he's known as the quarterback whisperer, has worked with some great uh, young talent and quarterback position in the past and growing them to be you know, potential Hall of Famers. And uh, I think it's just going to be a great combination. So MichaelClaytonSports.com, we're going to be talking about all of those sports topics. We're also uh, going to be highlighting young talent, like young singers. Oh, uh, nice. Michael Clayton Multimedia is the main platform, but we're going to kick off with Michael nice. Clayton Sports. Cool. We're going to highlight uh, talent, singers, actors, uh, comedians. Uh, we're going to do uh, charity events is a big part, you know, events that can't make their way on television or you know, don't have the money to get on television or the ability to get on television. I look to my platform being that platform that, you know, a lot of people in Tampa Bay tune into and you can get your event seen uh, on my platform. Hey, so nice. we're going to make nice. a make definitely make a platform for charity events as well uh, and local events that are happening in the Bay Area, restaurants to go to, things of that nature to kind of Got to yeah. keep the get the bills paid. So uh, yeah, sure. uh, re uh, highlighting restaurants will be a, a common theme of, of where where you should go every week. 
Amen. Uh, to get a bite to eat. So, Very nice. So a combination of everything. We'll kick off with MichaelClaytonSports.com, and uh, we'll go from go from there. Nice. Yeah. Sounds real good. You have to have Sounds variety. I like yeah. that. It's nice. Yeah. That's the key factor. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Earl, you didn't mention, I was surprised you didn't mention that, but yeah, you, you mean, have TalkingAboutChrist.com yeah. oh, and your, man. your show there that you do, and uh, you can find oh, out all that stuff on his website. That's my favorite show of all time, yeah. to be honest with you. And thank you, Todd, and appreciate it. You're welcome, my friend. Yeah. So and thank you so much again, guys. Thank you, we guys. Appreciate for coming on the show. Thanks, thanks for, wonderful. Thanks all for all right. the we new info yeah. and your Queen input D. and stuff. <laughs> Got <laughs> Scott and the one and only Mr. T. Riley. You, know, you got to say <laughs> and Todd thank you, Doug. T. Riley. <laughs> and my <laughs> good the T. new T. friend, Doug, Doug <laughs> the no, Jet no, friend. That's the Dougie Fresh over there. Come on, let's give it up for Dougie Fresh in the house. everybody. That's right. Uh, thanks, <laughs> Doug, for uh, helping us out, yes. man. We appreciate you, brother. Oh, Thank man. you to Bake More Pies for having us and letting us do our show here. And, uh, again, yes. you guys are more than welcome if you're looking for a place to do a show like this. Uh, Bake More Pies has us facilities available. They got wonderful uh, facilities downstairs as well. We're, um, Sean Brown, we filmed that uh, with him playing that piano. Uh, big studio down there. It's just great equipment and everything and uh, capabilities of doing any kind of video work that you might need, whether it's a commercial um, uh, product promotion video or, or whatever. And they also do uh, marketing as well and can help you market your company online. So go to bakemorepies.com for that. And don't forget our next show coming up next week, uh, Tuesday the 29th. You're not going to want to miss that. Singer, guitarist, Gary Shutt is probably... Well, not probably. He's my favorite local guitar player. <laughs> he is fantastic, just an amazing guitar player. He's going to be here in studio with us, and he will be performing live in the studio. Uh, be sure to visit our website at thesoundeffectshow.com where you can see all our show replays and visit our social media pages. Be sure to add us, like us, and subscribe to us. And thank you so much again for watching. We'll see all of you again next week. Bye. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>